running over this rock is in my hand. I'm going to tell you. I'm a little bit behind on my rock of the week. I think it's because, obviously I'm pregnant, right? I'm 37 weeks pregnant. And uh, I thought I was going into labour last week, so <laughs> we're a little bit behind, but we're okay, we're all good, like no baby yet. But basically, this week's rock of the week is Gabbro. And Gabbro is basically the coarse grained equivalent of basil. So we spoke about basil a few weeks ago and how basil is a lava that erupts at the surface. It's fine grained. I've got some here with me, right? It's too fresh stuff for this. Igneous rock. Now, gabbro, gabbro is basalt's equivalent, but gabbro forms in the surface as an intrusive igneous rock, right? So we have to go back to basics again, even though we've probably spoke about this before, but I like to draw my wee diagrams, as you know. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn about the difference between intrusive and extrusive igneous rocks, right? So this is a, you know, surface. This doesn't need a bit of diagram as per usual. And what happens usually when you have like a divergent plate boundary where two plates move away from each other, this is where you're going to have your basalt form, your basaltic magma, that's what gabbro is, right? And basalt, basaltic magma is basically a partial melt of that mantle. So you know, the mantle is like deep somewhere in there, blah, blah, blah. So you get like a partial melt of this stuff and in here and what it wants to do is it kind of works its way through the crust you know sometimes like kind of forming like along like as cells along different layers of rocks or forming dikes like you know like different intrusive igneous rocks that form but what you get sometimes is you get like a magma chamber form this is like a magma chamber right and usually the magma chamber is what feeds the the basaltic magma to the surface, or the magma, sorry, any magma at all to the surface. Um, but what happens in the magma chamber is, because it's intrusive, it's still hot in the crust, this is a crust. It's still hot in this crust, so what happens over geological time is this will crystallise very slowly giving us the coarse grains that you can see in gabbro. Because when you look at a gabbro, it's it's coarse grained. And in between gabbro and basil, you also have dolerite, but I don't actually have a piece of dolerite to show you. Um, I actually don't have a lot of gabbro, you know that. I need to go get more. And we can see the crystals. Basil, it's so fine grained that you can see the crystals. You need a hand lens to kind of look in and see those crystals. But gabbro, you can. And you can identify those crystals really easily and they're all interlocking with each other. They're all crystallised together, like over geological time. This can take thousands of years to hundreds of thousands of years to millions of years. It just depends on how much magma you have in that crust, right? So this crystallises very slowly, slow cooling, creates big crystals because it has time to crystallise. And you get different crystals that crystallise out at different temperatures as well. But we're not going to go into those details now because that just gets a little bit too complicated. But basically, if it erupts at the surface, it's extrusive. If it's in the crust, it's intrusive. That's a basic diagram for you, right? But basically, these form when you have two plates moving away from each other, usually at mid-oceanic ridges, where you've got oceanic crust like forming, right? And usually you have this related to like mantle confection where you've got like the uprise of the mantle like through convection. You know, I've done that wrong. <laughs> um, and it subducts elsewhere, right? It's all about plate tectonics and that. And also new magma forms. Like, and that's where you can get gabbro forming as well, right? Basaltic lava, basaltic magma, these divergent plate boundaries. But gabbro, as I said before, it's a mafic igneous rock. Now, mafic means that it's rich in magnesium and iron. And it's low 
and silica, right? But it's like the opposite to granite. Granite's very rich in silica, silica minerals, but basil and gabbro are very rich in your mafic minerals, such as, you know, pyroxene, olivine, plagioclase feldspar, like the, the feldspars that you get, usually labrodiorite, I don't know if I said that right, um, and that, like, they're calcium rich, like plagioclases. Um, you also have amphibo in there and sometimes some magmatites and other mafic oxide kind of minerals in there, right? So rich in magnesium and iron, low in silica, right? When I'm talking low, I'm talking like less than 35, 45% like of silica in that rock. That's how we split up our different compositions. I'll put another diagram in the video for you guys to kind of compare the different magma types that you get and then uh, you can you can see clearly that the the gabbro is quite you know it's mafic the mantle's ultra mafic gabbro's mafic it then goes into your um granodiorite or diorites and uh, granites and stuff which are silica rich right so that's your kind of basics now we get different basaltic magmas and gabbro's forming at different points in the crust right and obviously as i said before they're always related or most of the time they're related to mid oceanic ridges where you have two plates moving away from each other you've got that divergent plate boundary like the north atlantic ocean for instance and you get basically the formation of new oceanic crust so that's where you're getting lavas your magmas like your basaltic magmas but within the crust you get your gabbros and when you form oceanic crust, you get layered gabbros sometimes. And these layered gabbros can be seen because sometimes they accidentally get abducted onto the crust instead of subducted. So usually when we have oceanic crust, because it's dense, eventually it'll recycle itself. As we spoke about, this is a convergent plate boundary over here where you've got two plates colliding. This is continental crust. This is oceanic crust, it's forming a subduction zone. It's new crust is forming here where you've got the upwelling of that partial melt of the mantle, right? So it's moving away from each other at either side. This is the sea, blah, blah, blah. The best diagram, you know, as per usual. And this is a divergent plate boundary. So you some, well, not sometimes, you get like layered kind of gabbles associated with like this, this boundary, right? like and that over time gets recycled into the crust but what happens sometimes is instead of getting subducted it actually gets abducted onto the crust and you get slivers of it you know in the crust and we see this like in scotland like at ballantry in the highland border complex at the highland boundary fault line those are ophiolites and that's where you can find gabbros sometimes you also get gabbros related to big igneous provinces like and also hot spots as well where there's basaltic magma being pushed up from like deep within the mantle as well. Like you get like magma chambers forming underneath these. We can see some good examples across Scotland on the Isle of Skye, the Black Coolins. That's made up of gabbro. That's the reason why it looks all jaggy because it's basically rugged, it's jaggy. It weathers differently to the Red Coolins, which is granite. The Red Coolins actually formed from the partial melting of the crust because it was so hot in that area that because the gabbro was intruding into the crust right, right next to me you've got your red killing crust, what it did was it melted the crust so partially melted the crust next door to it your red killings are made up of a different type and that's why they're a different intrusion. Which makes up your red. Your red kilns are made up of granite. And that's why you have granite the two contrast in mountain ranges and sky on the Isle of Sky. You've got your red coolins, your granites. And then you have your black coolings, your gabbros, like very rugged, very weathered, like weathers differently compared to granite just due to its mineralogy, what it's made up of and what we've discussed so far about gabbro. Pretty interesting, you know, like pretty cool. You can also find gabbro in island arcs, again related to divergent plate boundaries, like sometimes like, um, aye, there's igneous provinces like that form that have gabbros like basaltic magma like underneath certain continents such as like not certain continents certain countries like Iceland for instance is a good one 
we have probably quite a lot of gabbro in Iceland. I've just realised I'm not using my microphone. <laughs> ah, crap. Oh, well. Hopefully you can still hear me. And that's Gabbro. That's this week's rock. So I hope you've enjoyed. Um, and we'll speak about a Morphe rock next week.